Previously on Coomer's Country. Damn you, Coomer! After having a little fun at Officer Joe's expense. Yo, look going yonder. Coomer, damn. what did you do? Hell, your damn car come out of gear or something. I don't know. I don't believe it come out of gear. Travis got surprised with the bill that he refuses to pay. $2,000, Joe, you gotta be well, crazy. That's right, that's right. Mechanic work ain't cheap. You can look around here and see that. Maybe it's time Travis gets out of town and visits with some old friends in Nashville on Coomer's Country. In order to make money, Travis Coomer drills oil wells. Searching for that black gold, buried deep in the soil. And Travis can't make his money unless he's pumping crude. Well, it's early in the morning on Coomer's Country, and Travis woke up to some unsettling news. Well, Austin, my grandson, called me and said that somebody had sold all their tools to work with. I'm going to take them some wrenches down there and get them back to work, and then we'll figure it out from there what we got to do. They took everything. Well, I brought you a couple extra pipe wrenches. Did they get all your pipe wrenches? Yeah, every one of them. They even cut the fuel line. Cut the fuel line? Yeah. Who would cut your fuel line to get fuel or diesel? It's cheap as fuel is now. Why would you even be interested in stealing any fuel? Well, here's your couple wrenches to work with. Uh, and uh, Oh, yeah, they did. They took the key to the rig, too. I guess you need to tell me what all, what all they got and everything. All right. Kind of pitiful that we got people like that in our country, but I guess we just have to work with them, you know, work around them. Or... I'm going to call Joe and... Uh, Get him down here, we'll make a report on them stealing all that stuff. And all right. I guess the best thing to do, I mean, they might run across somebody and they have the damn pipe reaches in the truck, you know. That's it, I'm gonna call Officer Joe and get him down here to catch him. Yeah, hello, Joe. Yeah, this is Travis. I need you to come down here and need to make a report. I got some stuff stolen. They've ripped me off down here at the service rig on the petty airs. Get him to finally do some real work. Something that he's good at. No, I ain't got your check. I can't believe he asked me for that check on a deal like this. Why, yeah, just come on down and you can make a report. Maybe y'all run up on somebody that's got some wrenches or something. All right, I'll see you in a few minutes. Bye. Then yeah, Austin, them found a wire there at, uh, I guess, shorted out or something, burned his thing plumbing too. I didn't see no more wire going across to here, but it, it ripped it in part, apart, and this right here sparked real big. So I pulled it back over here out of the way. I wonder if it blew out the circuit. That it there? Yeah. That's hot. Watch it, son. No, it's definitely hot. That ain't good. I better call an electrician. How are we going to catch them guys? I don't know. Maybe Joe will be able to help us out. Well, maybe Joe will catch them. He's pretty good on that kind of stuff. Well, I don't know, he didn't catch you. He ain't caught me yet, has he? No. I ain't done nothing. What did Ralph say that day? He come up there, Ralph McCurry? He asked you. I'd go in town and get that steel off that new pulling truck. Yeah. He come uh, up in there at a the big uh, horse barn. He asked uh, if I knew anything about a moonshine steel. I told him, no, I didn't know nothing about no moonshine steel. Was it one there? Uh, that's what I reckon so. Where was it at? Pretty close to where they is at. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe. What do you know, Travis? Why not much, hey, Joe? Pretty good, pretty good. You called, I come out know, and see you. I called up there this morning. Uh, uh, here it is late. Y'all boys can't get out here a little earlier than this. Well, I mean, you, you know, they stole probably $1,500 worth of stuff off me here over the weekend. Well, when was the last time you was here? Well, I was Friday evening, late Friday evening. Well, it could have been any time over the weekend. Yeah. It's going to be kind of hard to do anything with. 
I can get your report. What about my my little deal on my wreck? What you mean? got my little what check? Gonna... I don't know. I ain't got time to talk about this stuff right now, Joe. I've got, you know, we got all these guys out here running around doing this dope and. Well, and I know you've been hit hard. Oh yeah, law. All y'all won't worry about so trying to. Uh, you know, you need to be catching them guys. Yep, you're still out here doing moonshine. No, I ain't doing no uh, moonshine. You've seen moonshine, that. show me some. Give well, me a drink. Uh -huh. I need one. Can't you tell I'm mostly the disturbed? A man can't hard work no more for the thieves around here. Well, that's, pay it, that's I mean. true. I know you've been hit hard here lately. I know they, they got you for, what, 30 head of cattle? Well, I just stole, stole my cows. I stole lumber off my barn. I'm fragile. Well, I've got some leads kind of on both of them. And, uh, I get my weights off my pump jack, my motors off my pump jack. And now that I think about it, I've had a lot of stuff stole off of me. I feel bad for Travis. I mean, he has been hit hard here in the last few months, but now, you know, the other fact of the matter is he owes me a couple of grand for tearing my car all to pieces. But get it's, you book and get do a report on this and see if you can put it out there and get somebody find out, find out where my stuff's at. I know what would help me get more enthused about trying to find his pipe wrenches and the cattle and stuff, and that's that $2,000 he owes me. Now tell me again so I can get this report on what you got missing. All right, they got three of my rigid pipe wrenches, and they cut my fuel line, stole my fuel, stole the fuel lead or throwed it away, stole the keys out of it, probably throwed them away just because they could. But. Uh, they need to get up in a hurry and go somewhere and they can't find their keys, you know, somebody took their keys. Well, that'd be a, yeah, that'd be a, a payback, that's for sure. All righty, I'll get this in, get his report done on it, and get it out to all the other agencies and uh, see if we can. All right, Joe, get to work. Get on out of here. All right, buddy, thank you. Do. All right, thank you, Trav. Yeah, boy, we see you. See you. Gonna hold it, is it, Willis? I'm uh, I'm gonna go to Nashville and see an old friend, and, and uh, I'll pick you up some new slips, and I'll be back up here in the morning early with them. All right. So I guess the best thing it's getting late anyway. We just shut down here this evening. Okay. Oh, we don't need to fool around, and drop that tubing in the hole. We'll spend a week fixing it out. Yeah. All right. I'm heading Nashville. I'll see y'all in the morning. All right. Have a safe trip. All right, buddy. See you. With all of Travis' equipment either stolen or broken, it's time to hit the road and see some old friends in Nashville when we come back on Coomer's Country. Coomer's Country is being brought to you by Black Gold Moonshine, real Kentucky moonshine made the right way. And by Bit Brokers, Tricones, Hole Openers, Cutters, and more. Don't drill without Bit Brokers. And by Oldham County Tourism, three bourbon brands, horse farms, and 30 trains a day. And by Jeffrey Machine, the world's largest privately owned auger company. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. About 130 miles southwest of our tiny town of Columbia, Kentucky, is booming music mecca of Nashville, Tennessee. An old friend of Travis has invited him down to visit and take in the sights, an old friend named Gloria Willow Dean. Gloria told me she's gonna be over here at the Ryman Auditorium. I better head that away. Ah, the Ryman Auditorium. Gloria is a pretty redhead woman that lives in Nashville, been around country music all her life. Uh, I met her up here drilling an oil well for a guy, and she was with him, and a super nice person. It's a song and the song you sing. Captain Ryman's where it all began. We still got his boat, and we keep on rowing. Maybe she'll like my new moonshine. Music City, USA. Biggest little town that you'll ever play. Nashville, Cashville, what a pearl. He'll got his boat, and we keep on rowing. Welcome, Travis Coomer, to Nashville, Tennessee. 
Thank I call you. it home of Music City USA. We love you and we're so glad you came to town and we're looking forward to black gold. Yeah, we are, ain't we? What, we what are we are. doing coming to ride a mom and auditorium? Well, this is sort of where it all began. When I was a little girl, the Ryman Auditorium was the mother church of Nashville, and this is where we'd come, and we'd cross through Tootsie's and come through the back alley from the Ernest Tubb record shop, where we just finished up with a race car of Marty Robbins years ago, and I'd climb about the fifth row up on the back stage of the Grand Ole Opry, and I'd sit there until Marty got through, and, and then uh, when we finished the Marty show, the very last show, and we'd head on over to the Midnight Jamboree, where we'd meet the troubadours, Lynn Owsley, Ronnie Roadtroff, Leon Rhodes, and Jimmy Heap, and the Ernest Tubb, and Ernest was just one of my idols. You know, we just love Ernest Tubb. Why, yeah, they was all good. They Every was... now and then, Loretta Lynn would come in, and we'd, hey, it just didn't get any better, but I welcome you to Nashville. I brought some buddies along with me. This is Pearlie Curtis, and Pearlie's a dobro player, but he's also a steel guitar nice player. To meet you. He's yeah. a Hall of Fame member from Maine, we welcome him, and this is Mark Jackson. Mark's the Mark uh, Jackson. Yes, sir. guitar player that we, we met here in Nashville, and we're so proud to have him join us down here tonight. I want to get Purdy. Purdy, you play that dobro pretty well, and you know, I remember a dobro player when we, we were here, here at the Rhyme, and you know, Marty Stewart used to play here, and he was just a young little pup like me at the time. We were just children, and there was Lester Flatt and Ernest and Earl Scruggs, so would you play me a tune, Purdy Curtis? You know, uh, Dobro was, I think, one of the prettiest music I ever heard. It, uh, I had a, a cousin one time used to play Dobro. He's dead and gone now, but I remember going by there and he played old Dobro boy and he'd make the hair stand on your head. Tell you what, there was nothing no better than standing on the sidewalk as a young little child. And we meet lots of people here, and I've seen people sell everything they've got and come to Nashville. You know, just to get a, a grips and, and a chance to play at the Grand Ole Opry. Oh, yeah. And sometimes yeah. their only chance was to sit out here on these sidewalks and these steps of the Ryman Auditorium, and that's the closest they ever got. But you know what? That was something. Oh, and yeah. And in the eyes of a little girl, you just don't ever get over stuff like that. No, I'd say that's for sure. You know, I just love it here in Nashville, and I welcome you to Nashville so much and all your friends. and. I hope we get black gold because, like well, I said, it's I just awesome. Why don't we go I somewhere and uh, we'll We're sit gonna down, head down and to Legends and sit down and do some more talking. Well, let's do that. All right. That'd be so That'd neat. Work. When we come back, Travis sees what Gloria thinks of his black gold moonshine. Everybody wants to buy. Ooh, honey, this is good stuff. I love this. Under the neon lights of a Nashville night, there is music playing in every hot spot down Broadway. Travis and his old friend Gloria find a nice quiet spot and reminisce while tasting some of Travis' new black gold moonshine. You know, Travis, I'm so glad you came to Nashville. I just thought you never would. You know, I went to Kentucky and I found you up there in the woods and you were over there drilling for an oil well and it was very successful. And out of that oil money, here comes black gold with all this moonshine, and it's just, I remember what happened to me in them woods, you know. Yeah, I know. You, you had a bad cough that day. I did. I coughed my head off, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you was coughing your I, head off. I did. I, I, I've had breast cancer three times, you know, and I lost my hair, and yeah. I've really had a hard time, but you've always been there to pick up the pieces and cheer me on, and well, you've helped good. me out many, many ways, and with the bottom of my heart, I truly thank you for all you've ever done for me. Well, that's But good. this moonshine, I tell you what, it kept me from coughing, because the more I cough, you know, the epiglottis in the back of the throat, it's like a little maple leaf, and them little fingers get to tickling, you just start coughing. She's a talkative gal, isn't she? But it worked for me, and I told you that day, I said, you know, Travis, I said, your moonshine's really good, but the only thing I think that you needed to do was to add a little bit of flavor to it. A little more flavor, yeah. Cut the yeah, mucus, you know, that's... put some lemon juice in it or something. Yeah, you know? they put some lemon or a uh, uh, taste of that right there. That there's uh, cinnamon. Yeah, I think you'll like it. Ooh, buddy. Hey, do you always bring this 
backup music along the way. You know what? I do. I use them as well. I'd rather have somebody take my lipstick away than make my mascara run. And these oh. boys make sure I don't cry. Yeah. So hey. <laughs> and they keep it. You know they. We meet some pretty rough characters in some of the places oh, where we I play, you know. Yeah, we play get, everything from big places yeah. to little places. Well, they so. get to drinking too much in, so, and that's what makes them, uh, everybody want to fight. Ooh, honey, this is good stuff. I love this. Yeah. I tell you what, you know, after that breast cancer, I'm, and today at 2 o'clock, I'm so proud to tell you that I got my test results back, and I'm cancer free. Praise God. Well, you know, good. I just that's like, good. you know, <laughs> it's good. really good, you know. so. You know, I believe that moonshine, it's medicinal purposes, you know, because I'm Indian. Yeah, I believe the natural ways. I believe in, in the Mother Earth, and and I believe that what you get out of the ground, God used everything to heal people with, and I believe in the healing power, you know, and when you use moonshine for medicinal purposes, I don't, really don't see anything wrong with it. God well, liked a little bit of wine, you know, so Jesus had it, so... It's yeah. good enough for Jesus. It's good enough for Gloria. That Cheers, there, guys. That there's supposed to be is this coffee, the coffee. Is this my coffee I pour yeah, my moonshine in? Or you don't got moonshine in it? It's got coffee. It's 100 proof moonshine with Woo! coffee in it. But I think it needs a little more coffee and a little less well, let's, let's just see because you can't mess up think. good moonshine now. Wow. That's pretty stout, but hey. That's good. I, I like that coffee. I think it a little more coffee, though, and, and a little bit less moonshine. Well, you could, but but you know what? I like moonshine, so well, it keeps it clean, you know. Put your coffee in it and make it the kind of way you want it. Well, they probably. could strengthen it the way they want, but you know what, Travis? I think I'd leave it just like it is because it's really good. It's a good mixed flavor. Yeah. And we call this stuff black gold. Yeah, you know, that gold. reminds me, when I came back from seeing you in the woods, I came back and I wrote a little little song called Black Gold, and it, it's like it goes a little bit like this. I'll sing you just a little bit of it. It says, Black Gold, Black Gold, you're my best friend. Oh, how I love that smell. Oh, how I love that Kentucky shine. Black Gold, Black Gold. You know what? You are my best friend, Travis Coomer. I love you. Thank you very much. Laura and I go way back, and as you can see, she's not lost for words. Hey, uh, we need to go over here at Ernest Stubb's record. Uh, I can take you over to Ernest Stubb. You know, Blair Carmen's in town. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I hear he's supposed to be over to Ernest Stubb's record shop. All right, let's go over and see him. Oh, yeah, that'd be neat. Let him go, boys. When we come back, we'll enter hallowed grounds of Nashville, where so many country musicians made their mark. The Ernest Tubb Record Shop. Stay with us. Coomer's Country is being brought to you by Black Gold Moonshine. Real Kentucky moonshine made the right way. And by Bit Brokers, tricones, hole openers, cutters, and more. Don't drill without Bit Brokers. And by Truck Claws, get your truck unstuck. And by Jeffrey Machine, the world's largest privately owned auger company. And by Dustless Blasting, it's the future of surface preparation. You can't escape the neon lights and music of Nashville, Tennessee. One location where musicians got their start was the Ernest Hub Record Shop, and that's the next stop for Travis and Gloria. Well, Travis, I want you to meet some of my friends in here. This oh, is yeah. the Ernest Tug Record Shop. I, I've been coming here a long time. I was about five years old when I first came here. Is that right? This is sort of where it all began. You know, Nashville didn't have any music till it was the Ernest Tug Record Shop. So oh, yeah. I want to introduce you to some of my friends. And Andy's in here, so come on, let's meet Andy. Okay, yeah. Is, Travis Coomer, this is Andy Tucker. Hey Andy. there. Andy's nice the manager here at, at the Ernest Tub Record Shop, and he sort of holds things together and keeps things going. Well, that's good. Andy, why don't you just tell Travis a little bit about the history of the Ernest Tub Record Shop here in Nashville, Tennessee? Well, you know, there's there's so much of it, it's hard to condense it. And from 51 until the mid-70s, we held the Midnight Jamboree at this location. Uh, the Midnight Jamboree is, of course, the, the most important extension of this record shop. Probably one of the longest radio station air that has been aired. The world's second longest running radio show behind the Grand Ole Opry. 
Wow, uh, that's, that's good. We still hold it. Uh, we have a theater out near Opryland, which is where we hold it now. But uh, we're coming up on celebrating 70 years in May of next year. We've got a lot of pictures in here. A lot, a lot of pictures. Of, most, of, all, most everybody that's represented in a picture played in this record shop yeah. and, and had a relationship with Mr. Tug through the years. First place Patsy Klein ever played in Nashville. Uh, Loretta played it 17 times before she ever played the Opry. In 54, Elvis was not treated very kindly by Opry management and told to go, go home, keep his day job. And Mr. Tubb gave him the stage to play. He sure did. You know, we're not as young as we used to be, Andy. Nobody is. It don't take long to get old, does it? No, it doesn't, Travis. But I tell you what, it's, it's been a blessing. Meeting artists when I was a kid, you know. When I first started out there at Opryland, when we went, when we left Broadway, we went to Opryland out there, and Opryland was big and booming, and we built the Ernest Tubb record shop out there in the middle of the parking lot. Okay. And literally, it wasn't very big. We had this bench in the middle, and we had hay bales out there. And the side, it was almost like a pole barn. And the sides of it would lift up. And people would come along, like myself, and we'd either stand up around the, underneath the pole barn where it would come, it would cover you just a little bit, but, and then at night when it was over with, we'd let them windows down to cover it back up and secure it with, but if you got there early, you got inside to sit on the hay bale. If you got there a little bit late, you'd have to stand around the windows outside and lean yourself in like a horse. Kind of like it is out here now, if you don't get there early in trouble. Oh, that's true. <laughs> you know, Nashville's a booming town, but we still invite everybody to come down there. Wow. You know, Ernest always said, you know, he was the most friendliest, friendliest man I ever met in my life, you know, and he always, what was he saying about the neighbors? You'll be better to your neighbors and you'll have better neighbors. That's right, and Ernest would always end with that, and then he'd raise his guitar up, like the guitar says, thanks. Words to live by for sure. Travis and Gloria continue singing and telling old stories till the wee hours of the morning. But that's all the time we have this week. We'll see you next time on Coomer's Country.